welcome a Madeline DiNono, President and CEO of the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that in Los Angeles, California, I am currently on the traditional lands of the Chumash peoples. I want to recognize that we are all connected with one another and that the ground beneath my feet is historically the home of indigenous peoples. I'm so honored to be with you today, and I want to thank Congreso Futuro Organization, the Senate of Chile, and the Ministry of Science of Chile, Nuestra Voz, FEF, and the BHP Foundation. Today is all about providing you perspectives on what's happening in popular content and digital spaces, and I'm very excited to share recent insights from our new research and best practices for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So let's get started. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Institute in case you may not be as familiar with who we are. And the Institute was founded uh, in 2004 by Academy Award winning actor, Gina Davis. And it was born out of her observations as a parent of very young children. And what happened is uh, when she started having her children, like any parent, she started watching children's content. And she was very, very surprised to see a disparity in terms of gender, in terms of diversity, and, and seeing that uh, stories of, for girls were not being represented and the portrayals of female characters were not being represented in the most popular content. And Gina thought it was odd in the 21st century that we weren't showing boys and girls sharing this sandbox equally. And she decided to take a research approach to determining whether what she was observing was indeed true. And that's how the whole Institute uh, got started. And so you may say, well, why should we care about on-screen portrayals? Why should we care about the world of fiction? And there's a social imperative, which I believe uh, we are more aware of, and then there's a business imperative. And so, for example, simply women and girls are 51% of the population, but our content, our digital content uh, is bereft of female characters and historically has been a ratio of three to one characters in terms of male characters outweighing female characters. And this goes all the way back you know, to the 40s. When we think about, and particularly given uh, COVID and Omicron, we're consuming more media than ever and we're allowing our children to watch more media than ever. Children are engaging with media and multiple devices seven hours a day. Media consumption also impacts mental health. We've also seen a dramatic increase in mental health issues, particularly uh, with what's been happening you know, in, a, in our world. And that can lead to depression and many other things. And we've also seen that the sexualization of women you know, in media can be tied to eating disorders and low esteem. Now, when it comes to the business imperative, you're all business leaders. You know, we know that uh, consumers and audiences will reward, you know, content that is diverse. And whether it be ratings, whether it be, you know, box office, uh, you know, we did a benchmark study that showed uh, out of a study of the largest grossing family films over a 10 year period, that female centric films generated 55% more at the box office, and that films that had diverse casts were making the most money. So what I have for you today is actually a mixture of, of two studies. Uh, our first study is a state of the industry for television in the United States. And given all the changes in digital consumption, digital devices, how we're watching, what we're watching, how much we're watching, we wanted to look back. So we looked back at, you know, five years of television from 2016 to about 
2020, and we looked at the 10 most popular uh, TV shows. And you know what we you know found is that on a positive note, uh, screen and speaking time for female characters actually you know has gone up. And you may say, you know, why is that important? And it's important because it's one thing to say, you know, when I'm looking at a show, when I'm looking at a TV show, I see female characters. It's one thing to say that they're there. It's another thing to say, are they infused with agency? You know, are they at the center, you know, of a story? So having equal screen and speaking time um, is very, very important to us. You know, when it comes to race ethnicity, uh, which is extremely important, what we found is on a positive note that 40% of the supporting characters were BIPOC compared to 32% in 2016. And we did find that on average, BIPOC characters were 15% of leads and co-leads. Um, and we did find that BIPOC characters were nearly 51% of all minor characters. So we did find parity, but again, not with leads, but with background characters, but at least it shows forward movement. Now, when it comes to other marginalized groups like LGBTQIA, uh, unfortunately, we're just not making a lot of progress. There were no LGBTQIA leads or co-leads from 2016 to 2020, and there was a decrease in supporting characters over the past five years. We also look at uh, disabilities because people with disabilities in the United States are, you know, 19% of our population. We did see an increase in terms of leads and co-leads. Uh, and in, but in 2019, we actually had a peak of 23.1%. And minor characters rarely have any type of disability. And we look at disabilities in terms of, of cognitive, emotional, mental health, and, and physical. Now, when we look at the population uh, for 50 plus, uh, again, you know, people 50 plus are a very high percentage of our population. And we did see that the share of leads and co-leads reached 60% in 2016, but it was only 7.8% in 2017. So we saw a dramatic, uh, dramatic drop. And the share of supporting characters had also reached a peak of 26% in 2016 and has remained somewhat steady. But we have seen in terms of minor characters, supporting characters, it was the lowest in 2020. And this was all before COVID, so clearly we've been taking this into, a, into account. When we look at large body types, you know, why do we look at large body types? Because 39% of our US population are people with a larger, you know, body type, and there's actually zero leading or co-leading characters. And what we have also found is that uh, characters with large body types tend to be the brunt of the joke, uh, they tend to be highly stereotyped, highly discriminated uh, against. So the next study we wanted to drill down on and share with you is uh, women, you know, over 50. And to quote the phenomenal award-winning actor, Angela Bassett, she said, I love my age. I'm old enough to know better, young enough not to care, and experienced to do it right. So the topic of ageism in entertainment is nothing new, but we wanted to shed new light on how entertainment is reinforcing negative tropes and stereotypes and to hopefully inspire all of us to do better. So let's dive in. For this investigation, um, our methodology consisted of a survey. And for that survey, we looked at a nationally representative opt-in survey of 1,500 U.S. adults, and this was administered from September 9th to September 20th in 2021. And then we also did a content analysis and looked at the top grossing uh, box office, domestic films, and most popular broadcast and streaming shows uh, over the past, you know, 10 years. 
And so one of the things we wanted to uh, point out is that the average earnings of female actors increase until the age of 34 and then decrease. And then we see kind of the reverse. The average earnings for male actors peak at 51 and then, you know, stabilize. So overall, in terms of respondents from the survey, uh, they find depictions of adults 50 plus to be inaccurate, stereotypical, and not representative of their actual um, age. 75% uh, of women 50 plus wish that they saw more adults who were more like them. Uh, in terms of tropes and stereotypes, we don't show them with jobs. We don't show them with relationships. We show them uh, alone, um, not engaging really in society. And we also found that 50 plus characters make up less than a quarter of all the characters. And this is a very large group of our population. Uh, so we are, have been shown that they, you know, are working and have some authority. Um, but again, they have no romantic lives. We've seen that older characters who are frail, frugal, creepy, lonely, or burdened. 93% of leading film roles for characters 50 plus that w went to men and 81% of leading TV show roles for 50 plus characters uh, were occupied by, by men. So there's huge gender, you know, disparities. And in terms of recommendations, you know, clearly we need to measure progress over time. And even if you're not producing TV or film. I mean, this goes into images that you may show on your website, a language that you may use for job applications, images that you may depict about your company or your products or your services. And it's really important to think about all types of underserved communities, people with disabilities, the LGBTQIA community, uh, people with, you know, disabilities. So that's all I have for you today. And if you want to see more about our research, please go to www.cjane.org. Thank you so much.